Well, next stop is Drillman, as people have been repeatedly asking me to go after Dustman last. Now let's try out the Skull Barrier. So, like it was in Mega Man 4, I'll probably barely use it unless necessary, and for weakness affiliations. I really should be using my special weapons more. Oh goody D's. I know, I was just worried about their implementation in this game. Wait, what? It was solid below there? Wait, death collision on all four sides? That explains a lot. Let's try it again. I knew that was gonna happen once, so that's why I decided to save state it. Not exactly free though, but... I was hoping it would respawn the left, but I guess not. You weren't that bad. I guess because I always kept trying to hold a charge shot, he never fired his drill bombs at me.
Last but not least is Dustman. People have been warning me about him, and let's see why he's so much of a challenge. Not so much Dustman himself, but his stage. Don't mind the transition, just wanted to get back up to two lives. Nothing too bad so far, but that may change in the near future. On an unrelated note, Drill Bomb is awesome. It just one-shots these big enemies. And I can still remotely detonate it. Shield attacker placement in this state is a bit annoying. Could have gone really badly there. Cute side gacha pun. Let's take the risk. Five gap. Can I spawn? Yeah, I can spawn him here.
Not too tricky of a jump if you use the rush coil, but I get the feeling I missed something there. Then again, this game already has a lot more force weapon usage compared to the predecessors, so I'm not really surprised. And by this point, you're forced to have the rush coil anyways. To be honest, this stage wasn't that bad. Out of the second set of 4RMs, the hardest stage was Dive Man stage, easily. This one is, I guess, on the upper end. And Dustman was fine as well, just need to time your jumps over the Dust Crusher. Frankly, if I were to pick a first stage to go through out of the second set of RMs, it'd probably be either Skullman or Dustman. Now we're back to the Wily Marine Station, or Wily Marine Fortress. Oh hello there, punk. The second of the Megman Killers. Why not chase after Wily? The door is right over there. It's been a while since I last faced off against Punk, so my apologies if I screw this up. His conic damage is very high. Again, it's a matter of reaction times. After four deaths, I did it. And by defeating him, I gain his weapon. Like how I acquired the Mirror Buster after defeating Anchor, I get the Screw Crusher. And to be fair, in that one Rockman 6 manga, Center Man is revealed to be Center Woman. So why did she this fortress, which didn't explode by the way?
Now we're entering the Wally Station or Wally Marine Fortress proper. Yep, Panta. He built a backup. Also, I'd like to correct the mistake I made in the previous game, Rockman World 2. While he didn't build a time machine by himself, he stole it from the Kronos Institute and modified it, so it could travel both into the future and back to the present. Of course, time for a drop platform. Oh yeah, rush jet time. I forgot, this is a rush jet where you can't control its vertical height. So you have to get it right the first time. No, it isn't, Genoc. You're confusing it with another stage. But you're right, this stage is awesome. And I should be conserving my weapons for the rematches. In fact, let me start using the screw crusher now. Once I can actually find an enemy to use it on. The dust crusher seems kind of weak. This though, this is fairly powerful. Really? Oh! Here's something I forgot I could do to make this section much easier. Note that the spikes don't harm you unless they're fully outside the ground, which does make this section a bit easier. Jumping, if I hold the charge shot it's causing some problems. Just let go of the charge shot while doing that jump, then it works. Now I can sort of drill bomb energy. After all, we have Eddie here. Bikes are actually half platforms. That's interesting. There's 
The dancing mats had 3 HP, in contrast with most other mats. Outside those hiccups, this stage isn't that bad. I still find it easier than Dive Man's level. That's currently the hardest stage in the game. You again. you would get me there. Round two. This time it went a lot better. Why didn't it drop a large life energy last time though? Isn't it supposed to do that? Or is it random? Three different mess species in the same room. Metor, Metal, and Metal Dance. Are you sure, Daibumin? This version of the giant Susie dropped a large life energy after defeating it. So I guess it's then randomized. You saw what happened when I defeated it for the third time. It dropped a large life energy. So clearly it must be randomized. And compared with the two previous games, this game does a better job with its final stage, incorporating all the previous gimmicks from the eight stages. Oh, hello there, machine. No boss rematches? Well, I guess they're added in Rockman World 4. Even though they would fit in here. That wasn't too bad. I just kind of screwed up the pattern. Nope. Wally's well, fake out. Apparently he's only weak to the screw crusher.
And I get plenty of Screw Crusher shots to defeat him anyways. And thus ends Dr. Wily's current plan. But of course he escapes. You know, I like the increased variety of Wily Castles and Fortresses in the world titles more than the classic mainline series. Rip Wily again. So this is a good time to give my overall thoughts on Mega Man 3 for the Game Boy, aka Rockman World 3 as a whole. In general, I think it's a better package compared to the predecessors. It's certainly more challenging, but it has its own set of issues. First and foremost, the game lags more. And it's not like it's a constant lag, it has a bunch of lag spikes. The main reason is because many of the screens are packed a lot more with active objects and enemies, which I don't really mind too much outside of a few scenarios, but the game designer should have known about this in advance and worked around these issues. It did make some sections easier, like the Sparkman platform sections in Sparkman stage, but it made other sections more difficult. Plus, the second set of RMs have kind of a difficulty spike compared with the first set, although that may be because I start off by going after Diveman, whose stage I feel is the hardest out of the entire game, the second hardest being probably the last Fortress level. And I'm not too keen on the forced weapon usage of Rush Coil in the second set of Roadmaster levels. Weapons feel about the same compared to their NES counterparts, Sometimes slightly better, sometimes slightly worse. And the Mega Man Killer weapon I get in this game, the Screw Crusher, seemed to be a fun weapon to use. Fairly powerful, but you have to get used to its arcing and bouncing properties. For a game that takes inspiration and elements from both Mega Man 3 and Mega Man 4, I guess it's also okay. Still, I'd say the Mega Man 3 and Mega Man 4 and the NES are better, especially Mega Man 4, but this is a much better showing. It did a better job of integrating elements from both of those games, and applying its own spins to them. And I do like the new bosses, those being the giant Susie, Punk, and the Wily Machine. And we are missing a few elements, like the Dog Robot stages, or a second set of Fortress stages. And there was no boss rush at the end, even though it would fit in in this game. Oh well, at least this game wasn't a pushover, like the previous game was, and it was fair in terms of difficulty compared to the first entry in the World Series, although it did have its unfair moments like with how the drop platforms were programmed. At least the ending music is less bittersweet, though the background is more boring.
Well then, I hope you all enjoyed my Let's Play of Mega Man 3 viewers. If you enjoyed it, please rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe, as they all help out the channel. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter as well, and join my Discord server, as I regularly post updates there. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all in a future Let's Play.